Good afternoon. Now, rising trends are the building blocks are potentially driving the future. They also indicate the activities will need to start to be prepared. And thus, in uncertain times, it is more important than ever for companies to recognize relevant trends early and incorporate them in their business procedures and remain successful um, along the new terms. Although nobody precisely knows the impact of the current crisis of COVID-19 in the pandemic, most of us will agree that there will be strong effects on our society as a whole, consumer behavior, business models, and other important dimensions. An early and continuous trend analysis is a very powerful tool to appropriately react to the upcoming change. Now, in today's dialogue, we're discussing how to manage and align with the new trends in the post-COVID-19 market environment. In studios with me, I, ha I will have Mr. John Walugembe, the Executive Director of Federation of SMEs, and um, Dr. Paul Chalimpa, the Deputy Director General of the Uganda Investment Authority, and Mr. Robert Wenok, the Head of Business and Personal Banking from the DFCU Bank. Be a part of this conversation. The hashtag is Top 100 SMEs at 2021 on Twitter and the other digital platforms. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hey, good afternoon. Good, good to afternoon, see you. Mr. Uchama. After a whole year. <laughs> is it? I assume. Okay, after six months. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Perfectly, we're back here. Yeah. Uh, for starters, introduce yourself to the masses that they get to know who I have here. Uh, thank you. I'm mm. Dr. Paul Chalimpa, mm. the Deputy Director General of Uganda Investment Authority. Thank you so much. And uh, good afternoon, viewers. Good to be here once again. Robert Wanok is my name. Mm. I head personal and business banking for DFCU Bank. Good to see you. Good to see you, Do, Mr. Uh, Dr. Chalimba, let's start with you. How is the investment bank holding up, especially now that we have the COVID-19? It's, it's, you know, we're going back on the law. The economies and the social enterprises are opening up in um, Jan, as per the president. How is the investment authority holding up, especially for the SMEs? Uh, uh, this is an opportunity for the SMEs mm. uh, again to bound back into business. Mm. Uh, when you talk about opening the uh, the schools, mm -hmm. you are talking about opening up uh, consumer market mm. for those in agriculture because the schools we need uh, those providing for feeding. Mm. The schools uh, will go. We need stationary. Yep. The schools uh, will employ. Uh, are the teachers mm. and the teachers look after the immediate families mm. and the other families. It's a viscous cycle. So it is really a big mm. cycle mm. and you are talking about the transport sector also bounding back. Mm. So you are talking about actually that the real economy is back on board. Okay, um, that makes sense. And what is the investment authority doing about the MSMEs uh, to bounce back with strong capacity? Uh, one, uh, we we as investment authority, we support the LSM is special one mm. with the information they need mm. about the market okay. to the preparation to take advantage of the market opportunities. Mm. If you are talking about uh, that the SMEs currently need additional financing mm. uh, to be able to meet the demand when the market finally opens, like the schools, mm. uh, those who are supplying uh, in the agricultural value chain, etc. So it means that we have to engage uh, banks like DFCU, mm. we have to engage uh, Uganda Development Bank, we have to, uh, to engage the, 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 the agricultural insurance and all the other partners to prepare the SMEs to access uh, services uh, such as financing, mm. which will be required for them to meet the demand to, uh, to supply to these uh, institutions like the schools when they open up. So preparation of the SMEs is to demand, to, to be able to supply, mm. to meet the demand mm. is important other than now having the schools open and these SMEs do not have the capacity now to produce supply. and also supply and meet the, uh, the demand of the market. That, that is a very good conversation. Um, Wanok, we've, we've had these conversations. Y you should be now one of our, our, our colleagues here in the newsroom. <laughs> <laughs> when we talk about the SMEs, um, economically, COVID-19 struck hard in the coffers of the SMEs. I'll be very honest with you. In already a dead-stricken economy, if I should put it that way. And going by the 2019 Top 100 survey report, it came out that the savings are still the most common source of the startup capital, reflecting that is a 6% increase from 2018. Mm. <coughs> now, <coughs> when you look at the entire picture, clearly it shows that more, than, more and more SMEs seem to lose interest in the banking system.
Now, with the COVID-19 running, many of the many, uh, should I call it deficiency, financially, makes one anticipate that the 6% of 2018, maybe now, is 10% will equally drop. Now, for you as DFCU Bank, who has been a very key partner with the SMEs, would like to know, how can DFCU address this anomaly for starters? How can we win the trust back from the SMEs that they can come back to the banks and they can bank with us and we address this anomaly of the new trends? Thank you. Mm. And thank you, Mr. Chamagero. Uh, it's good to be back here in the oh, newsroom. Yes. <laughs> it's always an honor. Sure. And I must first say that uh, we've all been resilient. Oh, yes, we <laughs> we've, have. <laughs> we've all been resilient, and we've been resilient as a country. Yes. Uh, I, I cannot take that uh, credit away mm. uh, from the economy that we run. Mm. Uh, but let's put context to this. From the last time we were here, mm -hmm. having the same discussion, mm. again discussing the real effects by then of the pandemic mm. in a world that had not yet seen vaccination, yeah, yeah. in a world that uh, was having spiked cases. And we went through our own mm. wave where we actually, uh, we lost some really notable uh, figures um, in the economic world, in the business world with Mr. Chalimpa's side. Yeah. But let's take a look at where we are right now. Um, I first of all want to begin to set the stage mm. and say, look at Uganda in totality mm -hmm. and look at where we are right now. Um, current projections show that uh, we will grow between 3.5 to 5 percent this year, mm -hmm. which is a good space to be in. Uh, but are we out of the woods? I would say we are not yet out oh, of the yeah. woods. That's true. Uh, what I see, um, what we see from the banking perspective is still a world where uh, supply chains are still impacted. Uh, you've seen the frustrations that are going on across many sectors. Uh, the airport, um, the airport is, is open for business, but we still have uh, the post-pandemic, uh, post uh, post-vaccination drive uh, world that has opened up, mm. begin to start opening up to tourism sector and things like that. But it's not a seamless journey. Yeah. Uh, trade lines are still impacted uh, through impact that has hit in the input side. Uh, globally, everywhere, everybody's talking about the global supply chain impact. Mm. Uh, you have chips that, uh, chip manufacturers that are slowing uh, production, whether it's on your mobile phone or your mm. car. Uh, that trade line is still impacted. So the way you used to import goods, the volumes that you used to bring in is yeah. not exactly what you have today. Yeah. So it is no doubt that uh, you're in a world where confidence levels, especially with the business community, mm. is impacted. But on the other hand, I want to say that um, losing trust in the financial sector mm. is really not the right uh, reaction to have. Mm. Because the financial sector, we play a significant part in terms of reopening. And as DFC specifically, uh, we've gone through a wave. Uh, if you look at uh, from the time uh, the first measures were put in place, that was yeah. April mm. 2020 to now, and look at the proportion and stimuli that you would say we have put into the market. Mm. We've been able to restructure mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh, significant portion mm. of our business communities. We have actually <coughs> taken a real huge restructuring of our book and our income lines definitely get hit. Mm. But what you see happening in the financial sector right now is what you would call consolidation. Okay. I think what COVID did is uh, COVID opened us all up to begin to start looking at how do you continue life digitally yeah. without necessarily having to stop it. So if I look at the digital openings that happened, it there. created um, an avenue for us to invest and put in a lot of capital as banks mm. in order to meet that new shift and mm. get into that new normal. Mm. But on top of that, we could not shut the doors out. So we continue to provide credit. Yeah. And you will see that a lot of us in the financial sector, many of us had um, relatively decent uh, profitability last mm. year. And people actually wondered, how can banks keep on making <coughs> money in the environment that we are? Yeah. But, but I can you tell you, money, we, we did make money, oh dear. That's which, is, which is not a bad thing. Mm. But if you look at where we, where we continued to do, was to continue to keep the economy alive and yeah. sustained. Mm. We continue to fund sectors yeah. that were opening. Mm. As DFCU, we're one of the biggest players in agriculture. Yeah. Uh, we fund a lot 
of uh, the agri agribusiness mm -hmm. chains that mm -hmm. go on in this business in mm -hmm. this country so agriculture was continued to open and I think the coffee story was a success story yeah. the dairy story was a good success story <coughs> so those sectors we continue to go manufacturing began to start opening up mm -hmm. the sectors that took a hit like education we predicted it nobody nobody would tell you that they would not have seen what happened the moment COVID struck. So schools went down. We, are one, we have one of the largest portfolios as DFCU mm. in the education sector. And we have that restructured that hit. entire book. Mm. So where we are right now, um, we are in a position where, despite that moratorium period mm. ending, it ended, but we've been able to re-offer Mm. that moratorium to specifically the education sector mm -hmm. and the health sector. And as it is right now, we've, you, you could call it stimuli, yeah. but we have offered it. But look at the other stimuli that uh, we're talking about mm. right now, mm -hmm. which is uh, the contribution that we are making as financial institutions towards the COVID recovery fund for SMEs specifically. Mm. And it's a 50-50. It's between us and the government of Uganda. Mm. That money is directly coming out of our coffers. It to is the, not to the government and then to the SMEs and to the government and mm. to the SMEs and that should be taken up as stimuli. Mm. Wow. So in terms of restarting <coughs> the economy, banks are a significant player. Mm. You, you, uh, what I would not uh, encourage is for the SMEs to now withdraw and say mm. we will not, uh, we will not uh, bank, we will not continue, mm. continue doing some things. But like I said, the consolidation that's happening has also opened up a really strong avenue for what you'd call the fintechs to come in and begin yeah, start yeah, doing yeah. a lot more. So the fintechs, the telecoms have also come in. So that consolidation of banking mm. is where you saw people move to, oh. a, to continue to do payments. So you've shift. still seen a shift of payments that have gone towards the fintechs. Mm. But there is still a significant portion that is seated with the commercial banks. So what you're thinking <coughs> that the, 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 the SMEs have stopped actually banking. Mm. There is still an arm that is going on. Oh. Because at the end of the day, trade has to keep on it moving. Go, yes. And it has to be generated in one way or another. Mm. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense. Ma maybe say, mm. uh, from his practical perspective, mm. uh, today we are having the, the SMEs mm. now using the, doing the mobile banking. Yeah. So the, 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 the banks, the fintechs, are pro providing a banking platform which is an online one yes. so you can withdraw money mm. you can deposit the money mm -hmm. you can send money from your bank mm. uh, through your mobile from your phone, from yes. Your phone. Yes, yes. so convenience th that has changed the mm. the, the previous cost of yes. having to move to the bank mm. uh, having to send the queues the queues <laughs> and all that <laughs> that's why i'm seeing now some banks are reducing the, the, the ATMs. Oh, yes. And uh, you don't be surprised that you are going to sit downsizing mm. in terms of the, the number or the of the physical employees, em employees yes. on the teller. Mm. Uh, if you do the mapping or movement around, yeah. you find it has reduced. And even if the economy rebounds, mm. uh, the numbers may not be as huge. They have picked the model, they, there yes. is a shift and they have appreciated it. Yes, okay. and that is less costly and it's sim seamless technology. Mm. And uh, what they have to do now is that calls the need for investment in, uh, in the security mm. in terms of the, uh, so that you, you can ensure that the, the platform secures ca customers' money. Yeah. As the, the, you, the, the you money saw those moves. things that were going on online when people were saying that their money was getting, you know, stolen off offline and, um, yeah. and cyber. stuff. Yeah. Cyber, cyber security. The, 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 the cyber, cyber theft. Yes. Yes. And I, I, I really want to thank DFCU Bank for bringing the, the, the fact factor. Is it trust? Called? Trust factor. Trust factor. factor. Yeah, it's called if, trust if, factor. If, if, if I'm tapping into my app to withdraw money or to make yeah. any transaction, yeah. it will pop up. Yeah. It will send me a code. It yeah. will ask for authorization. Yeah. And thereafter, I will, uh, there is one day I sent 24 million using the app. Yeah. A friend of mine told me, you guys, that's you a big risk. <laughs> <laughs> but now what yeah. you're saying makes yeah. sense. Um, yeah. Dr. Chalimpa, government for the past two years, if I should be exact, has, uh, has sharply chopped the budgets. Sure. It has chopped the budgets purposely to meet the new agenda and the crisis we're in as a country. And globally, it's, it, it's something very global. But we want to understand, how has this affected the operations of the Uganda Investment Authority, given 
the mandate you had earlier on rolled out and the strategy approaches you had rolled out earlier before COVID-19? Uh, uh, first, to appreciate government uh, needed to, to cut this budget mm. so that it could have sufficient funds mm -hmm. uh, to, to address the negative effect of COVID-19, starting mm -hmm. with the uh, investment mm. in terms of the, the jobs, yep, yep. vaccination. Mm. Now, there is no way you say you want to promote investment. When people are dying. When people are dying. <laughs> That's true. So you must secure life first. Yes. Then the, 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 the rest of the investment comes, on people comes on next. Yeah. So to us, we, we welcomed the move mm. and it was in the right direction. Mm. Two, during that time, of course, uh, as you know, that travel abroad, mm. we, we do foreign uh, direct investment to promote, uh, we do... Uh, international visit physically yeah. and engage the international investors mm. in different countries Thank and you appeal to them to come to Uganda mm. and we do uh, that's business to government mm. we show them the government uh, the various opportunities mm. uh, we work with uh, for example the business arm of the government of Uganda which is Uganda Development Corporation yeah. uh, we do profiling of various projects mm. in energy in agriculture the, across all sectors oil and gas yeah. and then you promote them. Now, the physical engagement helps you to uh, directly have the questions and the answers of the and you, the, with the investors mm. and be able to, to demonstrate also the feasibility of these projects. Mm. Now, given that there was downsizing in operations and also businesses are reduced, bootstrapped and reduced the operations, at that time we could not do the physical engagements. So now we shifted to online, Zoom. Mm. Uh, so <coughs> uh, by and large today, Zoom meeting mm. online engagements. It is the way forward. Even when the economy rebounds, yes. we have found them more convenient. So has this in one or the other helped you on your budgets so, in, internally? Uh, that previously you'd have to hire Serena um, uh, Conference Center mm -hmm. and you, you'd need all these cameras and all that. Now you can do it on Zoom and it saves you a lot of money. Yes, mm. but also the, the enge physical engagements are required except we reduce the numbers. Mm. Why would you send... Uh, eight people, ten people, we can send two people and the rest to do the physical online. engagement. Mm. Then why there are physical engagements, the rest do the online engagement. Oh, yeah. So we have a hybrid mm. between the physical engagement and online mm. engagements. Uh, at that time also, before COVID, we would do uh, uh, what we call regional uh, investment conferences mm. to promote local investments. Yeah. Uh, but now those we closed them, so the budget was cut off. Mm. Because movement even across the districts was stopped. Yeah. Uh, but now what we, d we have done, uh, we have uh, also using the Zoom approach. Mm. Within the country, we are able to meet, uh, on, do the online meetings. Yeah. But also with the openings <coughs> now, we have smaller lean teams within the acceptable numbers mm. uh, in a bigger space. And we are able still to engage nice uh, in, in uh, profiling, for example, uh, the, the investors so that they can be able to know the available op opportunities in terms of the products, mm. uh, the available market, mm. and uh, how they can be able to access, uh, to supply, for example, the SMEs, mm. the large farms in industrial parks, mm. and do those other big farms abroad. So the bi business to business, business to customer, and business to government engagement has kept on flowing. Have kept on flowing using the online platforms, but uh, but also the physical ones. Has, has it affected the workforce that is at the Uganda Investment Authority? Are people sure. losing jobs? No. Uh, what we have done or is that them to the departments. No, we have provided we provided that data, mm. and the staff are able to work from home. So because you have a database of investors mm. who need. Uh, uh, mm. uh, what we call the aftercare services. Yes. Now, when you bring in on uh, the investor, mm. the investor you have pr facilitated like business registration, mm -hmm. business licensing, and then, for example, he has provided uh, land mm -hmm. and he has started construction. And now, f those they, they 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 seek, for example, for tax clearances, mm. for, for 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 free movement of the equipment, mm -hmm. which is tax free. Uh, uh, f uh, at the time of importation mm. across the border that's uh, uh, with URA. Mm. So you have to provide that clearance to engage with URA to make sure you get them these incentives. Oh. So you, you, you keep online that engaging. after registration. Yes. So each, in, each uh, uh, investment executive mm. is allocated 
a number of investors mm. wh whom he or she supports. That's so when you are at home, mm. You're, You're supporting <laughs> the investors because they have needs. Okay. Yes. Does this cut across even our local investors? Do Does this entire approach, um, or it only works for those we have gone government to government and we have engaged them on the other side, or it equally involves Ugandan investors here? Yeah, Ugandan investors, we have them who need also the support. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the local investors uh, easily adapt. Oh. as compared to foreign investors. Because the foreign investors make out inquiries, they are not familiar with the system. Mm. So you, you have to handhold them, to provide them the business support, mm. help them reach out to various offices to get certifications, clearances, mm. secondary licenses, as oh, they yes. do clearances to sell their goods, to export their goods. Mm. So you have to handhold them much uh, more than the local investors. But the local investors also need the clearances for to, be, to enjoy the incentives. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, so you do the same. And, and what incentives investors. does Uganda Investment Authority have for the local investors? Now that we have the Deputy Executive Director here, yes. we need to know those benefits that you, the SMEs, can possibly tap into and, you know, you get some, some money. The, 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 the benefits are enormous, mm. actually. Mm. We let, let, the first one. Let me start <laughs> the simple ones. Because SMEs need money, Dr. Yeah. Jairimba. Yes. <laughs> uh, one... Yes. Uh, the, if you are an SME, mm. we, we enable you access uh, three things: mm. information. One. Because you need information mm. ab about the available market. Mm. You need information on how to improve your capacity. Yep. For example, if you want to satisfy your products, mm -hmm. so I'll so give you the information uh, because we have one-stop center. Mm. The one-stop center is one central physical and online uh, platform that facilitates business processing. Mm. Right from business registration, we help you to, to register your businesses, mm. to get an investment license, which is free of charge, you don't pay. Wow. Uh, with the investment license, you just need to register your business. Mm. Uh, you, you, you need to open a bank account. Mm. Uh, Yes, mm -hmm. you need to have, have because we shall need you to prevent the bank statement. Yes. That's true. yes, then you need a business plan, mm. then you know so the source of financing mm. for your business. Okay. And once you have that, if you have also have land, mm. if you are, for example, an SMA and you want to do agro processing mm. within the industrial parks we have here in Kampala and across mm. the region. Mm. In, 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 now they have given us additional land, I will talk about mm. that later. Yes. So we, we give you land. And you'll be able to, uh, we give you free land. You don't pay. Mm -hmm. You apply for land. For how long? And uh, we give you, uh, we give you the initial lease agreement for five years. Mm -hmm. And once you construct and put up an infrastructure and you start operating, mm -hmm. we give you for the nine years. Wow. Lease are automatically renewable. Mm -hmm. Now, in the industrial parks, you'll access free security services. We provide you power. Now we are going to be gen with, the direct with the directive from the president. Mm. We are going to be having direct power connection from the dams to the industrial parks to cut costs. Mm. Then you will enjoy, also we are going to put IT. Uh, in the industrial parks? Internet, pa internet, yes. Come. Industrial <laughs> parks, yeah. <laughs> yes, because this has been fi uh, financed. Okay, with government has got credit yes. from Import Export Bank, UK Import Export Bank. Okay. And uh, now infrastructure started. The For IT? For all, all those park. services, including roads, mm -hmm. uh, uh, drainage, mm. uh, sewage system, mm -hmm. lighting, mm -hmm. uh, internet, mm -hmm. all those services are going to be here in Namave Industrial and Business Parks as wow. the first model industrial park. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're still having the conversation. The top 100 SMEs, I'm Andrew Chamagero. In studios with me, I have Dr. Uh, Paul Chalimpa, the Deputy Executive Director from the Uganda Investment Authority. And we have um, uh, one of our colleagues we have been with for all the years, <laughs> one from DFCU. The conversation is still ongoing. Uh, when, when, when you hear the ED talk about all these new facilities coming at play, to make sure that uh, the SMEs or the investors of this country bounce back, what does this mean to you? I, I would say, first of all, it's a, it's a, vote, it's a vote of confidence, yes. um, not just to, to me, but I think to the economy in mm. totality. Mm. And you have to give government uh, credit uh, yes. where it's due. Um, the spend on infrastructure yeah. has uh, evidently come out, and we've seen that it has not actually stopped mm. even during this period of time. 
but secondly also as a country, as, um, as a poor nation. I don't want to use the word poor, but as a developing nation, mm. the ability of government to go ahead with, uh, with critical infrastructure projects that leapfrog you mm. uh, into critical uh, areas of technology, ICT, uh, healthcare, um, good roads, that has actually been partly what is sustaining the economy. Mm. Now, for me, from a banking perspective, um, one of the key things, because he's on the fiscal planning side, yeah. I'm on the monetary side. Mm. It's very clear that on the monetary side, um, we, we give ourselves credit for the fact that, like you said, mm. savings had actually begun to start growing, mm. and we want to continue to see the savings grow. Now, as those savings grow, and as people begin to start uh, consuming, oh. as the economy opens up and consumption comes back to the levels that it was, uh, the growth rates when we were growing at about 5-6%, mm. this infrastructure becomes really critical for us to be able to drive uh, trade and commerce, mm. uh, to drive manufacturing. And for a bank, for me, it is the easier part for me to come out and actually begin to start looking at credit mm. and stimulus from a totally different perspective, from a perspective that I've got value inputs that government has actually been able to put in place. And I think that's where the, f the fusion comes in between mm. the monetary and the fiscal side. Okay. On the monetary side, we've always said that this country has done well. The central mm. bank has done really well. Uh, the banking sector has been really, really uh, resilient, and it's been very, very smooth. Mm. We've managed inflation we've managed the currency, mm. we've managed all the other monetary indicators in this country, and they look really good, mm. um, including pricing. Mm. Because if you look at today, the central bank rate is at an all-time low, at 6.5%. Yeah. That is the lowest that it has ever been. Mm. And that gives us the opportunity to be able to go out and offer f uh, cheaper credit. Mm. But specifically, speaking to what Dr. Chalimpa has spoken about, the ability of these investors to come and be able to find chunks of land that they can come in and begin to start putting their inputs. Uh, having trade zones, including, and, and if you've been to any of the trade zones, mm. you'll see that they've been well demarcated. Mm. They, they, they are zones that are for ICT, oh, there are yes. zones Agonda for manufacturing, mm. there's agri. Yeah. Now, for ICT. us, it has actually been, a, it has been an input for us to be able to get in there mm. and also develop the entire value chain that comes around yeah. it. And that is where now the public-private partnership and really comes into play. Uh, and something mm. on that. J just something, that, that, Dr. Yes, Chalipa. Yes, yeah. This <laughs> conversation is still very, very heated up. I love where we're headed as a country. And uh, for this conversation today, it actually means a lot. So for now, let me just take a very quick break. And when I return, we're having more conversations. And we'll be joined by Mr. Walugembe from the SMEs. We need to tap into what they're going through and what they're actually using these kind of platforms and services. It's still... The top 100 SMEs 2021. Well, we're still having the top 100 SMEs 2021. I'm Andrew Chamagdan. And we are live from Kampala Suna Conference Center. With me in studios, I have Dr. Paul Chalimpa, the Deputy Executive Director from the Uganda Investment Authority. And I have Robert Wanok from the DFCU Bank. With pleasure, they've been with the top 100 SMEs. And we're joined by uh, Mr. Walugembe from the, uh, the, he happens to be the, John Walugembe, he happens to be the Executive Director of the SMEs uh, Forum or Association in Uganda. He has been at the forefront for this, not forgetting our key partners and sponsors for this, that is the KPMG and the Nation Media Group. Mr. John Walugembe, good to have you here today. Thank you, Andrew, for inviting me. And um, given that we're talking about this, your rich man is here. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the president recently announced yes. that he will open the economy in mm. Jan, all the mm. other social enterprise. Mm. Um, and for many, uh, resumption of the business post-COVID-19. For example, some closed sectors will be mm. open, especially for the night economy, mm. which usually gestures mm. a boom in the business activities. Mm. The last time you and I met, um, mm. Uh, this was telling to close to one trillion shillings, the nightlife. Correct. And um, 
given that you deal a lot more with uh, SMEs, mm -hmm. I want to understand, have you, mm. how have you seen the President's Federation of, uh, you as the President of the Federation of the SMEs, mm. um, how have you prepared your members for this period that is coming in Jan? No, because SMEs have been hit, mm. you know, when, uh, when you're completely broke, yeah, you have no choice. Uh, and they say there is a wedding. Mm. <laughs> you have limited choices in terms of preparation because okay. you can't buy a new suit, you can't do this and stuff yes. like that. You just hope in anticipation that it at happens. the wedding, once, once the wedding comes, mm. something good might happen. So SMEs have been battered by this yeah. pandemic mm. uh, very badly. Some are already on the road to recovery yeah. and, we are, and we are grateful. Mm. Uh, some are not. But thankfully, His Excellency has now put a date mm. to when the entire economy will be reopened. Mm. So this, this creates, helps SMEs to plan. Better. Yes, you can even plan to close and say, you know what, <laughs> this, at this point. <laughs> but, but we don't want them to close. The idea no, but uh, you see sometimes mm. the business has gotten to a level mm. that you're better off starting afresh or starting something new. Mm. You can't just run after dead business just because you have to appear to be in a yes, business. Yes, in business. But ultimately, uh, we believe that the reopening of the economy is the greatest stimulus that yeah. SMEs mm. can have. And we're actually happy that His Excellency has now put a firm date mm. and discussions are happening with regard to supporting. Bank of Uganda has extended the credit relief measures for mm. uh, business people in the education sector and the tourism sector. Mm. They are even discussing a possibility of a fund. Mm. The small business recovery fund is to be announced soon. So we are seeing a certain responsiveness mm. from government, which is good. For, okay. for the sector. That doesn't take away the pain, but at least it shows that government the, is willing the, the, to There is a will. Yes. And um, what advice would you give for, to, to the SMEs as they're getting ready for reopening, mm. especially those ones who are not going to close, because we need the ones who are still going to be running business that you mm. can still run the economy? No, I think SMEs need to appreciate that the dynamics have changed. There mm. are certain sectors that have been severely disrupted. Oh, yes. and may not, I mean, look at the schools. Some, some teachers have tested money, they'll never go back. <laughs> oh, that, I can see now schools putting out adverts. We need yes, teachers, we, need teachers. we do our work. By the so, way. But now the teachers, teachers have calculated that in a month, I've, I make five times what I've been If making. I'm on a border border. A border, border, border. So how is yes. this person going to go back to school? So oh, right. if you're the business owner, you must have what they call a business resilience or continuity plan. Mm. And as a federation, we've been trying to help businesses in That's that respect. Nice. That's you nice. must look forward and mm. say, these are the facts, how do I go forward? Don't mm. just proceed as if everything is normal, as if yes. you had a break and now <laughs> you're back in business. <laughs> you're back in business. Yes. No, because the fundamentals may have changed and you may lose a lot. So that's mm. one. Two, we, you must be teachable. There are oh, a lot yeah. of entities that want to support. Mm. UIA, mm. the Federation, yes. uh, DFCU mm. Bank, mm. KPMG, yes. the Monitor Publications yes. is also has, instead of focusing on printing newspapers, I said, how can we support how SMEs? Can we support? Yes, yes. Now, if all those entities are there at all, you'll be teachable. Because okay. some of them are there now saying, oh, those people are discussing. Yes. Then tomorrow when things happen, they start making, where, where are you federation? <laughs> where are you government? Where are you? Yes. Please take time, listen to what we are saying, because it will impact your ability learn. to be able to recover well. Wow. Yes. Uh, I, I love the entry of uh, Mr. John Walugembe. He always, he made a presentation the last time we had uh, the top 100 SMEs. I think we had Sheraton yes. th that day. And the figures you are, you, you are spitting, I had to go back home and reflect mm -hmm. on how bad this is it as a country. But before he came, uh, Dr. Charlie Mpa, you, you, you were submitting about something, and I want you to to break it down to the investors of this country, especially those in the SMEs or the mid-sized com companies that can understand what the UIA is doing with regards to domestic investors. Uh, one of <coughs> our key areas of opportunities mm. as a country is agro-industrialization, mm -hmm. which includes manufacturing. Uh, and uh, uh, as a country, uh, the government mm. has, is setting up industrial parks. Okay. Now, uh, let me start with the nearest here in uh, Namave. Namave mm. has over uh, uh, 5,000 uh, investors, mm -hmm. and, uh, and 85% of these are local investors. Mm. Now, but also, besides giving those land, free land, mm. 
we, we government through Uganda Industrial Research Institute uh, has supported, has established what we call the incubation centers, mm -hmm. where they nurture SMEs mm -hmm. in manufacturing and processing mm -hmm. and value addition of their products. They support you in the product development, uh, coming up with the product, running the, the, the techniques of value addition, mm -hmm. helping you to get free certification with the NBS, your services. Mm -hmm. And then when you are ready and your products are acceptable on the market, mm -hmm. you become independent. They give you space. They have SME worker space mm -hmm. where you grow from like for a period of two or three years, or when you feel you are ready, you go and become independent. That's the way of nurturing. But if someone SMEs. says he's ready in 10 years or 15 years? No, they, you have a timeline okay. and you are monitored. Okay. Then two, for those that have uh, at least 180 million mm. shillings. Uh, as capital. As capital. Mm. We give you land in industrial park, mm -hmm. and each acre in Kampala, is more than 500 million in terms of value. That's true. Now, when you develop this land up to 30 percent of your planned construction or investment, mm -hmm. you can write to Uganda Investment Authority mm -hmm. and uh, to the bank, you ask for a loan, and you get you use this land and the infrastructure mm -hmm. as security. So the collateral is no longer the land title anymore. No, no mm. it is, and it's. It, 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 we have given you the lease okay. agreement. So I use the and lease and agreement. And therefore, we uh, yes, oh. you have uh, uh, forty-nine years lease. Mm. D then you can apply for collateral from the bank. Okay. And the, the bank needs to write to us that this uh, investor mm. or what you call the mid-sized company, or local yes. company, mm. or foreign, even if it is a foreign company, mm. so long as it's in Uganda, mm. has needs to get credit. F uh, f using mm. this facility mm. and for us we need to do due diligence of the and an assessment mm. of the value so using the inception uh, of okay. the, the in terms of the development percent? yes yes to make sure that you have at least done the development up to 30 percent okay and also uh, we want to, because we want to guarantee to the bank that looking at your development, the level of growth and development and your plan, mm -hmm. your actual viable, you will be able to complete your investment and, uh, and therefore we support you because we have uh, a local investment division mm. to support you to be able to pay that money. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want you as our investor to get the credit, then you collapse. Oh. When you collapse, also... It you comes have back to the government, doesn't it? Also, also, there are people who have put mm. money in the bank mm. in the form of fixed investment, yes. it is, who are also going to lose. So mm. we don't want the bank to, to, to lose, yeah, and we don't want you also you to lose. We mm. want you to grow. So we want to support you knowing that you have credit, mm. so that we support you access a uh, market, mm -hmm. access this finance, we give you information to access other new business partners, mm. so that you succeed and you pay the loan. Uh, and Robert, and Mr. Chemagel, okay. mm. uh, this was the really critical part that, uh, that I had really wanted for the government to clarify, mm. uh, because uh, Historically, mm. investors would come to the bank and they would get their the facility. Bank. We would fund mm. against those properties. And the initial position that government had taken was to backtrack mm. and uh, recall all such arrangements. Yeah. So it left us with a huge exposure. Mm. Um, we on the collateral had, sides. Yes. Mm. So we had, we were suddenly seated on an exposure mm. that was not covered without with with any form of collateral but it's good to hear that this is this partnership is actually now yielding mm. where government is actually now gone back and said all they want from us to is to notify mm. them that we are taking a charge at we're taking a charge against this property mm. and in that way i am able to extend credit to a business that's a significant portion mm -hmm. uh, but what what he also talks about is when you get organized uh, industrial parks like if you go to Namanve mm -hmm. you've seen where DFC is yes. yeah, right at the front mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know how you got that space though but we can carry on <laughs> <laughs> because no, 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 ours is outside of the ours is purely yeah. our land oh yeah. this, yeah. Yeah. this is mm -hmm. DFC yeah. but we, we we strategically positioned the, mm. the, 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 the we're strategically positioned to be able to fund and make sure that we make an entry into 
all these companies in there because oh, this yeah. is now a hub yes yeah, so you have a proper hub and spoke model mm. whereby the hub has been provided for by government mm. now for me as a financier i'm able to come in and and have a very good view of what this uh, entity is actually going to be doing mm. but beyond that entity beyond namamve mm. if you look at the outskirts of namamve now yeah. what this does is that the industrial park begins to start developing supplier models, yeah. other the outlets that mm. are coming in, and that's how any supply chain mm. works. So it enables me as a bank to be able to go in and as DFCU we've gone in on a local entity level. Mm. We've also gone in and been able to, uh, to pick up and say, okay, who is behind roofings? Mm -hmm. The hardware stores that are positioned around yeah. them, and I'm able to provide credit to them too on the strength of what uh, uh, UIA has been able to uh, to, to and, and there's some small <coughs> farms also in the real estate. Mm. There's demand for, for accommodation facilities. Yeah. Oh, yes. So they have put up now facilities for accommodation. Of course, I've already started. Hotels in, in there. It, I, I was in Namamve yes. yesterday. I visited a hotel called uh, the Source of the Nile Hotel. Yes. I was very amused where it yes. is. I was like, it, but is it owned by a Ugandan? I, I audited, I say yes, yes, by a Ugandan. I say okay, yes, that is good capacity you've given, uh, Mr. John Walgin. When you look at all this, um, yes. what the government is doing, mm. does it create a much more better springboard for us to bounce back as SMEs? And you if mean so? How do we tap into you? Mean what you've been discussing around industrial yes. parks and so on? Yes, look, I think sometimes, I mean, I like what government is doing, very yes. strategic and mm. so on. But we must also realize that 93% mm. of all businesses in this country are micro. True. Mm. They are micro businesses. That's true. Now, we also have some good meats. And that's why we are talking about the top 100, because we want to give, tell those micro that, look here, you can get here. You can get to this level, yes. Yes, mm. you can get here. And uh, so the challenge with industrial parks now Mm. As, as it is, if you have to use the mm. number of example, mm. is that ideally the, the idea of the industrial park is to create uh, basically synergy, economies mm. of scale, yeah. Yeah, so that p people within the same sector are together. Yeah? Yes. Now, <coughs> you see in, in <laughs> Namambe, you find Toyota next to DFCU, <laughs> DFCU, <laughs> I <know>. next to <laughs> church. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's a good try, but yes. what we want is to create lo linkages between uh, these investors Yes. And our local businesses. Because the, why are we focusing on investors and why are investors important? Because mm. SMEs and investors rely on each other. Yes, that's true. We want to look at technology transfer, skills transfer, mm. expertise transfer, mm. so that SMEs are able to pull up their socks. Their socks to, to measure Part of the reason why China succeeded, it used this industrial park model mm. Mm. by gazetting particular towns near Shanghai, mm. rather cities and so on, and saying, you pilot this, and it really worked. Yes. Now, what we are saying and are telling to UIA, mm. don't look at us separately. Because UIA you, you sometimes look, 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 at the, looks at the investor as the first child, as, yes. the, as, the, as the first child, the hair. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. I like that. I like UIA that. looks at the investor hey. as the hair. Mm. Eh? When they come into the house, yeah. the first, Mr. Rugem, can yeah. you please excuse yeah. us? Yeah. First yeah. Just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you. And that's I'll why you. we then, created then local investment says, But we also remember yeah. domestic investors. Yes, you yes. are like a stepchild. Mm. They remember you, but later. But we should After be the food has been served, hmm. they say now. Well, again, can what you are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what we are saying is, yes. you, you, you are a please. Mm. Let us move this concurrently. As you plan your parks, oh, yeah. let us have these centers for SMEs mm. within. Not without, not say, we have one acre mm. where SMEs can also squeeze themselves. Yes. Okay. Can we have one industrial park for SMEs of Uganda? No, they have to be linked. Or they, because or they again, be if you put, with if other you investors. Put, if you put SMEs alone, they will still stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, let the, so basically, now, mm. this park mm. and SMEs, there has to be, be yes. Now, what we have done, what mm. you call backward and yeah. forward linking. What we have yes. done mm. for all the industrial parks, 30% uh -huh. of the land mm. is reserved for SMEs. 30% of the 30 land in the industrial park. Is in each industrial park. And it is still available. And, it has and it is available. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what we want to do, yes. uh, what we have done now for uh, some of the areas where 
the uptake for land mm. is low. Mm. Uh, we are going to develop what we call the SME worker spaces. The uptake for the land in the industrial park is low. Yes. Mr. Walugem. Like, uh, let I me show you. They're expensive. Their acre mm. is 180 million. The, uh, let me As show you. told you, mm. and land mm. in the industrial their park, acre, mm. which is leased for 49 years, mm. is 180 million. Oh this is the cost of an entire small scale industry. Now, let, let me so give what you, you want. Mm. Is you are able to come up, and uh, I'm, I'm keen to learn about the workspaces. Yes. Because if they can come up with a situation where an SME does not need an acre, yeah. an SME needs a small place. Mm. Uh, with work uh, fit to purpose places where and they can, can work to scale. and so on. Mm. Uh, they, they can b lease them maybe t two million per year, mm. some a nominal kind of fee mm. which is affordable. And if now you are uh, saying, okay, uh, this mode of mainstream industrial park has not worked for SMEs and are going towards work for places, I think that's really welcome. That has mm. been our position. Mm. Now, uh, I can help. Now this is Please. very clear. Mm. I want to help people Please. to clarify these, mm. these mm. aspects. Mm. All land to investors, mm. local investors and foreign investors is free of charge. What mm. you want from your, from your sources of capital mm. as a local investor is that you can be able to mobilize. You can get a statement, bank statement, mm. and you can show that in a given period of time at least within one year, mm -hmm. you are able to have revenue of up to maximum 180 million. What if I fail? I'm just giving an example. Okay. Cumulation, if okay. I, I add the averages, yes. that in the whole year, if I mm. add how much I've been earning, mm. that's what I'm talking about the bank statement. Mm. Yes, yes. Or if the bank can write mm. and indicate that you have a source of money, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. And the maximum you can get at least. Mm. It's one eighty million. It's a As a local this investor, is, this is cr turnover. Yeah. Turnover, not, not, not revenue. Turnover. Okay, not yeah. revenue. revenue. Turnover, mm. sales, huh? sales. Mm. Yeah. And if you go to many of these. Uh, SMEs. Yes, here. Yeah. Mm. They have more than that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. If you go to these two have shops in Kampala. Yeah. No, no. He is a business yes. person. Yes. He knows. <laughs> At the end of the year, if you add up their turnover mm. yes. for the whole year, mm. it is more than that. It is. It is. It is. And we are saying. Also, even if you don't have that statement, yes, but you can show that you have the resources or the assets, which you equivalent to that, okay, to that amount, mm. which you use to invest, because you don't have so capital mm. direct in, in terms of monetary value, yes. how much, but the resources you are going to deploy, mm. equivalent to that, then we give you an investment license, mm. but you also allocate your land which you don't pay free. You don't pay even one shillings. Mm. I can bet you from here, any yeah. of you as an individual, yes. you come and register your company mm -hmm. at one stop center and you be registered within like an hour. And then we give you an investment license uh -huh. within a maximum uh, two days. You can save for the eight hours. Now, Dr. Shalimba. No, no, let's appreciate this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate yes, yes. <laughs> and then we I shall give you, we shall <laughs> give you, you will get your land and you don't pay a single yes, shilling. shilling. Let me show you where the land is. Okay. I need we to do have that. Uh, before you actually go, before uh, yes. be, before you, you proceed to the land, Yes. We ha you, you earlier on alluded to something called the additional land. Yes. Now, while you're telling us about the land, please highlight the additional land so that Mr. Walugembe yes. can be in position to know where the free land is. Yes. But again, we talk about the issue as actually alluded to. Can we downsize those figures with regards to the capital? No, no. We are saying, we are not saying give us the money. No, 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 no. But can you show in your business money. plan, mm. okay? That can bring us to that. You may not have the physical money, mm. but can you show that you will be able to mobilize money mm. or the assets you deploy? Mm. We equivalent to that mm. for the for the resources i think from the banking perspective yeah. mm. if you're talking it about a local investor mm -hmm. that who has his own resources who's, that is going to deploy yeah. for for this business yeah. mm -hmm. and the total in totality is equivalent to 180 million uganda ceilings they qualify for the credit i think yeah. uh, that yeah. is they, appropriate see, I, th I think what what where the the the, the misnomer is mm. which is the very first question that you asked yes the confidence levels in getting the smes to come to the bank to the banks because yes. what he's talking about is sales turnover mm. because yes. if you look if you break it down by month mm. you're talking about less than 15 million shillings in sales mm. and it has to have gone through a bank okay that is not even about profitability yes and i think the the real challenge to the smes is for the SMEs to begin to start actually looking at us as a partnership. Okay. That the bank is a partnership that you mm. can come, I'll bank my money, 
and it's not on the basis of that that URA is going to come and assess mm. me and things like that. But it has added benefit that I can walk to Mr. Walugembe and mm. be able to get this credit facility and get land in this area mm. and on the back of that i have a title that i can still come to the bank with mm. and say i have collateral to borrow okay yeah so in terms of you talked sorry, about additional briefly, land briefly before, before the additional yes. land comes in mr yes. 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 Uh, andrew these two gentlemen are the elite <laughs> For you, because you speak for Montua once, yes. you can understand I know our what sentiments. You're saying. Yes. Because Mr. Wanok is talking about 180 million as mm. if it is 50,000 shillings <laughs> in that pocket. You understand? I hear so you. we are saying, mm. look, these are good <coughs> guest charts, but they are not enough. They are not mm. enough, yeah. Okay. That, that is our position. Mm. Secondly, it's not as easy these people mm. to see them. You yeah. need to go through three secretaries. Okay. Now, Mr. Mm. Chalimpa here, mm. he has said, just come and register. But if you go there, you have to go through three <laughs> security <laughs> checks. And you have to go through three secretaries. And secure an appointment. And secure an appointment. Now, okay. uh, so I, now. Th <laughs> I think, uh, before we leave here, no, the, the, I will have provided <laughs> my telephone number. To the public. To the public. Thank you so much. Then, yeah. too, mm. I want to make it very simple. Mm. Is that, that actually, you, you have three options. Mm -hmm. the, yes. first, the first option... Mm is that uh, you, you make a write-up and you show you'll be able to mobilize that money. Okay. The second one, that you have the, the bank, you have a bank statement. Mm. Eh? Mm. The third one, uh, you have, you show that you have the cash somewhere. Mm. So all these options, you cannot say that you will not find <laughs> plan to mobilize that money as an investor. You have to mobilize. Okay, well, we'll then two, the, 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 the second part yes. is that if you are you don't you are not able mm. to do this what you are talking about yes. to own the land yourself mm. okay mm -hmm. you can mobilize as an association okay within yes and you register it mm. and you come and get the land as an, an association. association can you tell me as a business association you can fail mm. to have that turnover mm. and then you, you get the land Th that makes now sense. the other side I option think that's the better option that's yes the better option, uh, the, side option. the federation will come next week yes uh -huh. exactly. if we fail <laughs> if we fail we <laughs> shall be sure that our members won't say <laughs> 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 now the third option, yes. the third and option you need to go. <laughs> the third option is that <laughs> if you are not also able to get the land yourself, yes. we have said we have institutions okay. that have provided workspaces, and the government has given them the money. Mm. And those workspaces are there, and they incubate you, they support you, and mm. you don't pay. Wow. Government has paid. But they also have said, we are, so is that we are going ahead mm. to build 10 acres of workspace mm. available for all of the SMEs in this land. But this is so much information. And that's what we are saying. Why is it not in now, the Now, we are place? saying, that's why you have called us here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we are talking about it here. Mid size. And now we are saying yes. from Namanve here, mm. we are saying if you go to Jinja, uh -huh. this land. If Arua? you go, yes, Arua, they have given us land mm. in uh, in uh, uh, Namasagari. Uh, Namasagari. Yeah. Mm. Then you have uh, if you Soro go to tea. Kisoro, uh, Kisoro they give us over five hundred acres, oh, six hundred. Then uh, you go to uh, Lira. Lira, Lira, they have given us. Uh, 540 mm. acres, then uh, Guru, mm. all these places they have given us land, and each of these, as I've said, mm. 30 percent is for Ugandan investors, uh -uh, not Ugandan investors, SMEs. SMEs. Yeah. Then the rest of the land mm. for both local investors as well as mm. foreign investors okay. open. Where is the additional land? Additional land yeah. now that's the additional land I'm talking about. All those oh. the local governments have given us additional. Now the, the total acreage eh, mm. is this is over. Um, uh, over uh, over uh, 21, mm. uh, 500 acres, 21,500 acres, Under which what? have been given to us. Now, the challenge we have, mm. uh, uh, all the, the next step, mm -hmm. we are going to survey all this land, mm -hmm. protect it, okay, mm -hmm. and develop master plans for this land. Okay. And then, within one or two years, mm. we should be inviting the SMEs, mm here mm. the local investors because yes. we have now there's we had an sme division mm. which now we have restructured to look what we call local investment development division oh within the U uganda investment, investment authority. authority yes that now you, the local the, the local sm what you call the sm wizard they have what you call a local investment development division okay. Okay. and now we have established also the sme portal mm. where we are going to develop an app. Mm. We are working with the uh, USAID, mm. Feed the Future Program. Mm. We are going to develop an app 
or uh, through uh, district commerce officers mm. or trade associations mm. where the local business people mm. will be self-registering and providing and showing their capacity and you shall be showing them the opportunity online on their phones mm. and you'll be able to see yes, all sir. these opportunities. Are you aware of all this? And you want them to be partners on the same <laughs> portal. <laughs> and you're aware. That's what I'm asking. Okay. Mm. I am aware mm. about mm. the portal. Okay. For instance. This mm. this I'm aware. Mm. Um, I think it will be a, it's definitely a good thing. This will change the game, yes. Yes. Uh, also around about the idea of reserving thirty percent. my view is uh, you, you are, and this is just advice. Mm. Let the associate because for, for the federation to be able to get an acre of yes. land and provide that documentation, it's easy. Yes. For our members, it's difficult. Mm. Yeah. But we can get it mm. and then hand it over to the members in Lira. Mm. So that they, they maybe you have sublet. Y you sublet mm. to that mm. to that. Mm. So this makes it easier for the SMEs and reduces the burden on. Mm. But also in each mm. region we have uh, the 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 park managers mm. and with one so under one soap center mm. we facilitate the individual even if they are an, an association mm. we support them to register their businesses. Mm -hmm. Online as, as well as physical, mm. get get all the primary mm. licenses, mm. Mm. it get the thin numbers, and all the, whatever you request, and even the, the, the local taxation mm. under one roof, one one process. So he can come with the mm. list of those SMEs under one soap center. But they are dedicated staff, mm. Eh? Mm. whom ca, ca, can support. But also mm. under the online portal mm. www.ebiz.go.ug, mm. you you apply online there's a form. Mm -hmm. And then you get a feedback for whatever mm. payment is required. You go and pay using my mobile money. Mm. Or you go to an agent or go to a bank. You, you get what I'm saying? Mm. And you get your license mm. on your email address or any other platform where you want it. And you can print and it. And it has a code, you print it. Mm. It has a code and it's recognized. Without physically mm. having to come to UIA. I, I, I love the change and um, the embracing of the digital space, especially from the UIA. But what again Mr. Walgame is alluding to, you're saying that when it's one SME coming to you. Yes. Yet, according to the figures you earlier on gave us, they're still heavy for some of them. So Mr. Olgembe comes from the School of Thought. As a federation, they come and they apply for the 30% land. Pa -pa -pak. Yes, pa -pak. Mm. So the federation applies on behalf of their members in not, the federation. Not, not necessarily mm. members. Mm. Any SME yeah. who feels that they're eligible, yeah, because yeah. you can't exclude others who are not a member. Of course, yes. So we we get it in trust from you, yeah. and then we sublet it to the SMEs to in that. I, I think the mm. appropriate thing would be, mm. since the federation uh, also provides business development services mm. to their members, yes, the them come and give them the requirements. Mm -hmm. They work with their members mm. to help them register and, uh, and apply for the land. Mr. Chamagay, yes, I, I think <laughs> yes. I, I, I like the You're fact that you're going to respond um, to that. <laughs> I, I, but I like the fact that why, we, why we are so? discussing modeling mm. Mm. Uh, in, in this particular mm. this particular theme, the, the, mm. the, the, the thematic mm. areas that we looked at here was how do we relook at the way we are modeled yeah. as businesses, mm -hmm. and modeling has to. It has to, first of all, I think the first thing is businesses need to become open minded. Correct. And I think, Mr. Walgembe, for me, picking a leaf from the success in the agricultural value chains and especially the groups, mm -hmm. the agricultural groups, yeah. individually, those groups, you found that members were really doing badly. Yeah. Even in terms of being able to collectively go to the market or price well. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the way banks lost money, Mm -hmm. initially in mm -hmm. the financing of agriculture mm -hmm. at an individual level mm -hmm. and the way banks are actually now going for groups mm -hmm. what do you organized call clusters? in some of yes mm -hmm. clusters cooperatives yeah. associations yeah. Mm -hmm. they are much more organized together and i think mr Algenda, part of this modeling could be that the smes open up to that whole consolidation into those small little packs. Correct. And that way, it's mm. actually easier for you to actually say, I can assess the risk mm. of this, and the land is not going to be going out to be misused in any oh, way. Yeah. So mm. I think from a modeling perspective, mm. it's one of the things that we encourage. It makes sense. And there are very many trade associations. Mm. The SMEs have so many groups. Yeah, yeah, even yeah. when you just look That's at That's why there's a federation. 
<laughs> Mr. Walgembe here is seated in the Federation, yeah. but within Mr. Walgembe, there, there are very, there are very many, many other organized groups. Mm. Even when they go out to import things, mm. when they buy things, very small traders yes. mm. who live and turn over a million shillings a month, mm. you'll find that they do groupage. To if you know. go to containers, there, there's groupage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They pay their taxes in groups. They, uh, and I think that this should become the normal. The now, more ideas for, uh, for, 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 for these groups, to, for Mr. Algembe and the mm. group, to actually walk through and say, can you uh, provide me mm. with this? And walk to me at DFCU yes. and say, can DFCU assess me? Mm under this groupage and we will be able and to, then to we do we'll that. Bounce back. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, you but, wanted to, but I wanted to, to give to you a previous this. experience we'll, uh, you, 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 on that just approach. A, just just briefly, he, yeah. he had something Mr. Burning. Wanuk is preaching to the choir here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because, <laughs> the because, because that's the approach that's working for you. <laughs> that's what, uh, no, mm. it is that approach I'm, pre I'm trying to appeal mm. to Mr. Chaimpa to say this issue of saying mm. you go and profile your members and let them come and individually apply. We are saying no. Okay. What are you saying? We are too small mm. to go through that process, mm. and it's too tiring. Okay. You say we have thirty percent reservation for SMEs. Mm. Let associations, not just the federation, because oh, there are also other associations yeah, of yeah, SMEs. Yeah, yeah. Let associations bid mm. to say, let us manage. I am bidding for yes. this park. Mm. I provide all my requirements to mm. UIA. Once mm. UIA is satisfied, it gives me requirements. In this place, you must have maybe 300 SMEs in mm. these sectors, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And then I can have a performance contract with them. You are trying to accredit single SMEs. Mm. Is an exercise in futility. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, may, maybe to help with to, to, to help but him by the way, Edie, just, just so you know, the ones online following this conversation, I want to thank you so much. Chapman Julius says that um, I hope you got the right response from the deputy director. There is a knowledge gap between the UIA and the SMEs. Yes. That is what someone is saying on Twitter. Uh, then Ham Fire on Twitter, he goes that the discussion is very good and very informative, but action. Director Action. Yes. <laughs> oh, now the, 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 let me help my, my, yes. my brother from the Federation appreciate yes. this. Mm. What, we are, what I'm encouraging him to do yeah. is that for all the, 50, the 30 percent mm -hmm. land that is available, mm. yes. let him identify his members who are in the groups. Or in the association, okay. according maybe to a subsector, mm -hmm. because this land we said is for agro processing. Yeah. Yes. Let him identify those in agro processing, mm. yes. help them form an association, yes. help we help in if registration okay. and supporting them their capacity. Mm. Okay. Then when they have, th then they apply for that land, they and come utilize it. Okay. And that's what we are saying. Makes sense. And yes. we are saying, mm. but they go through him because yes. he also oh, yeah. because does business, business development <laughs> services. Yes. So he will be able to nurture them mm. as Correct. a group mm. and he'll be able to access this. Yeah. Mm. Now, for him, he needs to know how much land is available, mm -hmm. what are the requirements. Then he prepares his membership. Either in associations oh. or as individuals, who are able. Mm. Because some people can say, me, I can be able to take it up myself as an oh, individual. Yes. Mm. Then those who are in the groups also can say, they are mm. taking it up. As a group, yeah. And mm. we are saying, so from here, mm. can you be a, a representative of that change agent? Yes. You come, and then we plan together mm. for all this land we have. Yeah. Tell us, start profiling your, 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 your groups, members. other yes. members. Yes. And when I'm saying that, when you start feasibility studies next year, Mm. And we are start start uh, surveying, surveying yeah. the land. and marketing yeah. the land. Yeah. Mm. Can you be providing input in terms of how much land you yeah, are yeah. your SMEs, your members, or other SMEs who are not represented here yes, under yes, yes. his federation? Yes. How much they would require so that in three years, as we are locating this land, mm. you are ready. Mm. This is what. Entrepreneurs it's or business people or investors do. They prepare themselves. It's going to take us three years. They two uh, I'm saying two years. <laughs> <laughs> do you know why so? Do you know why so? Yeah. After uh, this land is given to us, we're going to transfer it in UINM. Oh, yes. mm. We are going to survey it. Mm. We are going to develop master plan. We are going to develop roads. Mm. To extend the power, the parks, yes. to, to, to mm. turn water. Mm. You got Talk saying? about power. We, we, we yes. uh, earlier on, before we actually started to go live yes. there, you alluded the fact that now you're working with the, with the dam from the dam to the industrial park model. Yes. Explain more about that. Now, the, <coughs> the, the, because of the high costs of power, mm. as well as fluctuations mm -hmm. in terms of power going off and mm. on, the president directed mm. that we work with the Ministry of Energy.
Mm -hmm. It is the transmission and those mm. and that generation transmission. Mm. That for all these other parks we are developing, we have direct power connection to the to parks. The, the sort of parks. Mm. So they're not one sustainable power and mm. low cost power. Low cost is the key word. Yes. We are having a conversation. Those on Twitter, thank you so much for being a part of this. The conversation is very emotional um, to the SMEs, and it's very, very informative from the government perspective. Mr. Walugembe uh, from the Federation of the SMEs, I'm sure now we have found a solution. Will that work for us as SMEs? To the, to the land question? Yes. I think that's yeah. a start. As someone said, the action. Yes, action, you know, action. Like <laughs> the, these civil servants are very interesting people. <laughs> when they talk about something, it is as if it is finished. <laughs> but, but, so, but you see, I, 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 I want to appreciate again <coughs> the So they can it, come and they mm. say a policy was made on yes. access to finance wasting. <laughs> and they think that SM is but a but Mr. For the Uganda Investment Authority, yes. at least I've seen a couple of all these things come to light. Mm. Maybe what we need more from, uh, from the director, rather the, the, the ED here, the deputy ED, Mm. we need the action to be much more vibrant and be expedited past. And actually, if mm. I can say this, mm. we have targets right from the president, mm. from the minister, from the board. Mm. In terms of the number of investors but we on course? that we need mm. to, to have uh, uh, taking, uh, taking up space, mm. the number of employment opportunities, actually, him coming mm. is an advantage to us because oh, for us yeah. we are on pressure yeah. to feed this target. <laughs> <laughs> so but, yeah. but Mr. Chamagero, yes. also I think um, yes. we can take this as a challenge mm. as, yes. part as a country, SM, yes. as, a, as a SME top mm. 100 yes. in this cohort, yes. Yes. and we take and benchmark and yes. see. Yes. We go to Mr. Walgembe's group, yes. and we take out and see the batch, the first batch, and we yes. say this is cohort one. Mm. Yes. And as such, this also becomes part of the key performance indicators that we assess ourselves mm -hmm. that the, the SME top 100 is actually working. Yes. Yes. So for me, I'll come and open up the accounts for Mr. Walgembe's trainers. <laughs> See? I open up the account. Yes. And then... In one cohort. In, in this cohort. <coughs> mm. So we go and work with Mr. Walgembe. We onboard his, his, mm -hmm. his, uh, his, his SMEs. Mm. And then we go to UIA. Yes. And we look at how we can do that matchmaking. Wow. And then... That's if good. there is a trader in there that needs, for example, working capital, mm. we would be able as DFC to come in and say, can we fund? Mm. What this. is it? Because now your capital, your capex mm. has been sorted out. He has mm. given you land. Yes. Yes. Mm. Now for me, I'm going to give you the working capital, which is mm. the short term one. Mm. Yeah. What do you want to do to stock? Mm. Are, you, are you funding uh, for machinery or whatever it is? Mm. And then I fund that leg. Then we, tell, we come back here mm. one year down the road and say, what is the progress that we've made? And this I think that is one of the benefits sure. that we can take and mm. as a challenge. And mm. uh, le let me put that also uh, much more in pro in productive. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> the, challenge, <laughs> the, the challenge is what I love. Nice. Yeah. Now, uh, <coughs> the requirements mm. for one to get a land must have an investment license. Yes. Mm. The question, what does it require to get an investment license? Mm -hmm. One, you need a bank, bank statement. statement. Mm. Two, you need a business plan, yeah. mm. which ourselves, we support you to get it, yeah. even mm. if, when you don't know how to prepare it. Yeah. Okay, you have experts on yes, that. Yes, we help yeah. you on that. Mm. And the Uruguayan based side also, they do that. Even yes. the bank does yes. that. Mm. But if those people provide it, on credit, yeah. Mm. On money, or yeah, so no, free. no, no. Yeah. If they ask for money, yeah. for us you provide it for, for free. free. Yeah. Mm. Three, mm. Uh, you provide a guarantee for access to finance to for your project, to bank, yeah. mm. up to a maximum of one, uh, to, uh, up to minimum of one eighty million. Mm. And he can say, if since we have opened it with me, yeah. Mm. And you don't say the bank is providing this money cash. Mm. We shall mm. say in financing this project, yeah. mm. we, s we guarantee yeah. to finance them up to a period up to one eighty million mm. for a period of three years yeah. mm. or five years. Yeah. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. And since they are working with him, mm. they will be, they, with that letter, they will get the land oh, yeah. and they will be able to start yeah. working. Yeah. So from here, what I'm going to do, mm. uh, when you go to Uganda Investment Authority website, mm. there's a land application form and the requirements there. You yeah. can fill it online and mm. return it online. Yeah. But mm. also, I can send it on the WhatsApp. Mm. On your WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> on my email. I love and you start to be able to You're apply. looking for the action. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> also, <laughs> but also, if you have like an association like mm. them, mm. if they want to set up a model, mm. for their, they can have, you can give them land mm. which they can develop mm. 
and provide work spaces mm. for their members. Now, the, the director, you, you, you understand yes, that? I, I totally understand. Yes. It's a very good uh, direction. Yes. But um, all these conversations, they seem to be yielding the positive energy we want for the SMEs. Yeah. Can we, first of all, break the barriers between you and people like Walugenbe who lead these federations mm -hmm. that we can have these conversations if, even when we're not on TV, mm -hmm. but they can have free access yeah. that this can be expedited and we can look at it from a different perspective. But, uh, but I think, mm -hmm. I think uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chamagero, mm -hmm. we, we need to uh, put this into, into perspective. Mr. Walugenbe came here and earlier on said mm -hmm. some business models yes. might not see the day of light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think that this is the right time for him to come out and say mm -hmm. these I have saved, I have yes. been able to identify. Mm -hmm. The, because it's not going to be a switch that True. on Jan 1, yes. be, there is a switch that you switch on and then and life all is go back, back to and normal. It's all, no, <laughs> yes. I think that it's a build up and yeah. we have the next 45 days yeah. or so to be able to build up. I mm. think what we just need to do is probably as a result of this now with with him, with mm. Mr. Walgembe, yeah. we organize maybe small little cohorts mm. as part of the survey of this SME yes, 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 because yes. the survey is still but going the on. The challenge. Mm. Yes. Mm. So we organize mm. small cohorts and mm. begin to start understanding in actuality on the ground mm. what are the real issues, yeah. who is opening up, who is not. Mm. And from then, you're able to see, you do some sort of readiness check mm. and you're ready to be able to open up so that by the time you say it's Jan 1, yeah. you're not necessarily against campering for order. Mm. People are actually kicking off. In the last Sheraton discussion, mm. you remember, mm. we said, if you look at like the nightlife, the we nightlife, just took yes. bars on, just we took an assist and said bars. bars. Anecdotally, without even, but this is a very informal study mm. that has been done as part of the SME study. If you look at the impact, 2.5 trillion shillings has been switched off from the economy. Oh yeah. 2.5 trillion shillings. And we counted and said how many bars are impacted just by the shutdown. Mm. And you know, remember when we threw yeah. out and asked randomly how many mm. people thought how many yeah. bars and people thought a thousand ten thousand mm. sixty thousand bars are that's closed. a huge figure and each of those bars has employees mm. it has yeah, there's an economy solid. around mm. it mm. so getting and restarting that and putting it back requires quite a bit of us also assisting Oh, from yeah. the financial sector, from mm. UIA, yeah. from all the other private mm. sector players. Mm. But it requires for us to be able to access Mr. Walugembe's people. Mm. Yeah. And do you know the challenge that we have? I don't. Uh, uh, this uh, challenge lies more with our SMEs. Mm. Preparation, preparation, preparation. Compliance, compliance. Now, compliance. The, the when, we switch to, when the schools start, mm. do you know some... Uh, uh, directors of schools. Welcome I'm not right. very sure actually whether the schools will be open <laughs> in January. <laughs> if you, do you know, mm. if you ask them, what are you doing? Mm. The, they will, some of you, them will tell you, we are waiting for the schools to be open. Do mm. you know by the time they open, some mm. of the, those who are supplying some in schools, mm. other new suppliers who have prepared themselves, will the have supply. taken over the, the opportunity. Yeah. And yes. by the time you come, when the school has started, a, a school will have already, already contracted another person. Mm. Now, this is how business is run. Mm. Planning is the core component of Mr. success. Olgenbe, are your people planning better for the reopening? Andrew, mm. one of here made a very serious statement suggestion. Mm. And I see us cutting around it. Yes. <laughs> he said, mm. look, let's test these things that you are talking about. Yeah, let's yeah, get yeah. a cohort, mm -hmm. maybe of 30 people. Yeah. We take them to DFCU, mm. we, we can have discussions and find out what the issues and so on, yeah. and then we pick out people who we think are promising. Yeah. We say, let's take them to DFCU, mm. let them open accounts, let them get known. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then when we have, we are, DFCU is finished with them, mm. we take them to Mr. Chalimpa here. Mm. Mr. Chalimpa says, bring your bank statement, they provide, mm -hmm. bring a letter from the bank, DFCU this is provides, it. Mm. they give an investment license. Mm. Okay? Mm. Then. Federation applies for land mm. for this cohort. And the land is given? Us. Mm. You see, we help them to set, you know, mm. concrete things. Yes. Because for 
because if, if we have 10 people that we have lifted from micro and are on a journey to become medium, yeah. mm. that's better than encouraging them from this side. Please, why don't you come? <laughs> <laughs> you are weak. You are weak. <laughs> so let's first pull them prepare, up. Prepare, prepare. Mm. Some preparation. <laughs> prepare, prepare. Let's go there, pick them up, take yeah. them to this model. Mm. Even if they are 50. So if we that will be a start of yeah. yes. and say let's get fifty SMEs. Mm. Mr. Charlie Pazuka is clear. Yes. He's willing to give us the land. Mm. But where they are, they don't have a banker, they don't have an account. And if they don't have a bank, mm. he won't give them the land. So therefore let's prepare them. So by the time it gets to Mr. Charlie Impa, they, they are, are organized. They are bankable. Mm. They are bankable. Mm. And also the Federation is there to handhold them. Mm. Instead of them in applying for an individual, the Federation can get it yes. on their behalf, mm. subdivides, then, you know. So that we, so for me, that would be a very good kind of intervention, mm. really, as a build-up to, 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 uh, to the bigger solution. To, to, to what you're doing. Um, yeah. Let me come back to you, Dr. Chalimpa. I recently witnessed an exit of some of the biggest retailers in the Ugandan market space, such as ShopRite and Game. When I had this on the news that that had not worked, I paused a bit. I looked at the the leakages. I was like, uh, now the suppliers. Now, like, it, it was a lot going on in my mind. And um, there have there have been a, sell, uh, a series of channels for many of the SMEs, especially dealing in production of uh, foodstuffs and all that. As the custodian of the investors in this country, is it an opportunity or a threat to SMEs? to have relied on these retailers? Uh, uh, you, you said ShopRite and Game. Yes. I, I passed that Game, mm. they are still operating. Yeah, Game is still open. So yes. that's the first yes. thing to observe. Okay. The second one, mm. uh, about ShopRite. Mm. Uh, we, ShopRite was, was wholly taken over by Carrefour. Oh, yeah. With all the assets and the abilities. Uh. And actually, they, they have expanded the outlets. Mm. Today they have eight outlets. They have even taken up space previously, mm. which was for Nakumat, mm. at, at here at Wasi Simor. Okay. So actually, this is an opportunity mm. for local uh, mm. for local SMEs who are supplying. Mm -hmm. Given that the company that took the over Nakumat mm. has expanded to more outlets, mm. has provided more business opportunities. Mm. Now the difference here in investment is what we call investor confidence. Okay. Whereas uh, Shoprite was uh, bootstrapping and reducing its operation to concentrate in a limited market mm. to be able to overcome the effect of COVID-19. Mm. Carrefour was looking up to new opportunities mm. in an economy that is opening mm. where it is co sure that because it provides a variety of products yeah. where local inv people, the consumers, can go uh, cannot enter that supermarket or store and fail to get products. Mm. Whereas uh, Capital shoppers were specializing uh, in high premium shop right, yes. yeah. in high premium mm. products, and therefore had been out competed by the local investors. So Carrefour came for us around two hours, and shop right was for. It's the inclusive, <laughs> it's inclusive, <laughs> and actually when we did an exit interview, yes, we established mm. the reason as why they exited. They exited mm. it was stiff competition mm. from local investors who had entered mm. the, the, into the, the place. The, into the space. Okay. Uh, but that is good for us. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and also. Uh, Andrea Pillow on Twitter says that most SMEs are not suitable in industrial parks because they majorly survive on the customers next door. No supply chain can be involved because they can't afford and majority of the industrial parks are in isolated areas as if game parks. Hey, there's something I wanted to talk about mm. that when you talk about establishing the manufacturing hub mm. locally, yes. we are saying that we have the farmers who are providing inputs for agro-processing. Yeah. Okay. But also we are saying mm. is, is companies like Steel and Tube, mm. they are providing what? That is what? Another no, no, I'm giving an example. That's, that's that's no, 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 I want to show you the example. <laughs> Let me finish the story. Okay. Do you know how many uh, local suppliers, the people who are welding, who depend on the ecosystem on on yes, on, yeah. on on who on steel and on steel and tube. tube. Yeah. Mm. Do you know steel and tube provides credit mm. to our hardware shops? Okay. On credit, right. and these people provide the same credit mm. to those people who are welding. Mm. This is how the network we are talking yeah. about. Yeah. So we are talking about supply of raw materials mm. as well as availability of the local materials mm. at low cost. Uh, what these people use in their 
what in their businesses. In their businesses. So when we are saying here we are producing more mm -hmm. of, for example, even if they are closes, mm. it means the, uh, you don't have to go to China, you don't have to pay the tax, <laughs> and then the cost of transport, the ETC. Okay. And, but we are saying the person who is growing cotton mm. as a farmer, mm. if it is the cotton close, mm. that is the input we are promoting those farmers. Okay. But also the people who are selling the clothes, the jewelry, mm. you are supplying to them directly here. So we are saying we are having what we call input substitution. Okay. Yes. Um, someone on Twitter and those on Twitter, I really want to thank you so much. It's 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 the it's the the, the social uh, platform I can actually tap in very fast and, and proceed. A couple of you have asked questions. Yes, someone has just said um, this goes to DFCU Bank. Um, whatever you're saying here, muri muruzungu. That is the word. And then it says, how accessible can this be done for the SMEs that really want to come back up? And I really agree with um, what Mr. Olgembe says. At times, some of us are preparing to close. This conversation is telling me there is more blood coming I shouldn't close. So how easy is it for someone to come to the DFCU bank as an SME and um, they get access to credit to bounce back? I, 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 want, to, I want to, first of all, thank uh, mm. the person who has raised the question and I think we take the with the feedback yes uh, the truth is um, banking has always been perceived as elitist mm. and that's why initially I spoke about and said what's going on in banking is the consolidation yeah. and if you look back at the past period you look at uh, how credit has changed mm -hmm. within this lockdown period I will tell you mm. that we have deployed uh, an, uh, a mobile a mobile lending tool that mm. people have seen people borrow a hundred thousand for a day. They told me I yeah. now qualify for two million. Yeah, <laughs> you, you now you see yeah, your, 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 your qualification is <laughs> two million shillings, and that was never there. Yes. We developed this <coughs> right through this uh, lockdown period, mm. so people have qualified and they've been able to come out for credit of five hundred thousand shillings. Mm -hmm. I have seen traders downtown in Akasero here mm. who have been able to come and borrow money in the morning mm. and pay back in the evening and that credit has actually come in thanks to the evolution of technology mm. and that deployment has actually happened during this COVID period mm. of time those are SMEs that's a typical SME mm. I want you to look at credit that we've been able to provide through for example people that are buying low-cost housing mm. or looking for low-cost rental space mm. to go and set up, whether it's a shop, whatever it is. Businesses have shifted from downtown Kampala, mm. from Chikubo, and they've been able to go elsewhere, and we've been able to provide credit. We have a, a facility called the Baraka Loan. Mm. That facility is targeted at the SME because you're going to come to me and I'm going to accept within DSC yeah. today. Mm. I'm going to accept your chapa, mm. you know. Mm. I'm not going to ask you for a formal title. Mm. I'm going to ask for your chapa. Mm. I'm going to, if you have a title, I'll take the title. Mm. But even some <coughs> of the movable collateral now that previously were never able to touch. Mm. Because now you have that, what we call simple, yeah. which is that tool mm. that enables you to go in and you can even check in your fridge. You mm. can go and check in your your computer mm. and people are actually coming and borrowing using that mm. and it's admissible On so end. yes it okay. is and this is actually credit that we've been able to do mm. so there th if you look if I look at the mobile lending platform mm. and I look at the way that portfolio has grown mm. in a very short period of time I have over a thousand borrowers on it in mm. a very short period of time mm. and many of them borrow overnight payback yeah. and then I also look at the growth in this um, secured and unsecured credit mm. uh, where people come and say this is my cash flow mm. I have been able to come out I've offered guarantees if they want a guarantee to be able to bid for a job mm. I have offered them guarantees up to 500 million shillings mm. unsecured okay. without asking for collateral mm. that is all part of the economy so the definition of Luzungu might be where they commit <coughs> the mis the misinformation okay. like we were discussing earlier on mm. and w some traders will choose to shut out mm. but we have 56 outlets in the country i have branches mm. in places as remote as a beam mm. and i offer credit in a beam yeah. where, where we are the only bank there mm. is no other bank in a beam <laughs> we are the only yeah. bank in a beam that's true and we are deep <coughs> in there 
all the way to Luero, to every single corner that we've been able to cover, we've covered the country. And we'll continue. So it is easier for an SME to go to into the bank? To just walk in, avail speak the to your work? business banker mm. or your, uh, your manager there, mm. avail uh, your, your what, what you'd like for us to fund, mm. and we will be able to do it. And we move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ali Ron, director, uh, the deputy executive uh, director of uh, UIA, this is Dr. Charlie Impa. You said there is money for infrastructure for all these parks to even set ICT, um, internet facilities, internet facilities, and all. Mm. How much money are we going to use for that? Uh, uh, we for now, we have received for Nama and mm. over nine trillion from who? From UK Import uh, Export Bank. Okay. And um, uh, this and that's credit. Mm, that is credit. Yes. Good. You're getting credit and you're extending credit. That's yes. good. Yes. <coughs> but again. Is it going to only be Namanve or it will cut across the other Now, the, 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 we want to know the, the same bank has mm. given, uh, has announced mm. additional funding for the five major uh, additional industrial mm. parks, mm. which include more special agro processing, agro, agro industrialization zones. Okay. That's focusing on agriculture for addition, three of them mm. uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a western Uganda that is in Fort Porto, mm. another one in, a, in a Guru. Mm -hmm. Another one in uh, uh, Rua. So okay. those are three uh, agro industries. So then the other two uh, are just main, uh, just agro, uh, just processing. Mm. Uh, that's uh, processing and manufacturing. Okay. Uh, perhaps. Well, the conversation is still going on. It's already 4 p.m. We started at 2.30. It's very exciting. We're going to take a break. But remember, it's the top 100 uh, SMEs at 2021. And we're live from Gampala Serena Conference Center. Great thanks to our sponsors. That is KPMG and the Nation Media Group. We'll take a break for now and we'll return shortly. Good afternoon. It's still a top 100 SMEs. I'm Andrew Chamagero, and we are live from Kampala Serena Conference Center. Just to make it more clear, this program is powered by DFCU Bank with pleasure, and of course the Uganda Investment Authority, and the key partners are KPMG and the Nation Media Group. In studios with me, I have Dr. Paul Chalimpa, the Deputy Executive Director of the Uganda Investment Authority. I have Mr. Robert Renock from the DFCU Bank, and of course uh, Mr. John Walugembe from the of the SMEs in Uganda. Before we went for a break, Mr. Walugembe, there is a conversation we need to talk about. Yes. What is the Federation of the SMEs mm. doing to, to uplift the SMEs that mm. they can match up to the larger firms? Because mm. Ali Ron Wanok alluded to mm. the fact that some of them just want to be there. They, they mm. feel comfortable with a hundred million and they just don't want to scale up. Is mm. it so? Okay, first of all, I want to say mm. that uh, I want to give kudos. We mm. have had a tough discussion here. Yes, but yes. UIA, if you look at government entities that mm. are pro-business, yeah. supportive, mm. turn around time and so on and so forth, I think it has... And yes, I've mentioned it. Yes, yes, earlier, yes, too. Uh, I mean, if you look at UIA, URSB, and others, they, I mean, they're doing a fantastic, uh, fantastic job. Yeah. And we need to upload them. Obviously, when we go before them, we represent mm. our constituency. We have to say <laughs> what <laughs> our <laughs> constituency is <laughs> telling us. So, <laughs> please don't, yeah. don't, get <laughs> don't get uncomfortable when it's difficult sometimes. Because yes. also, if I go back and I've been to no, soft, the you had our issues. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, yes, you did well. Yeah, so um, we are working closely with different government entities yes. to ensure, because without working closely with government, we, can, we don't have the resources mm. and the bandwidth to support um, SMEs. Mm. So we have been working closely with UCC, mm. we have approached the UIA for an MOU mm. so that we work very closely together okay. to support the, uh, these SMEs mm. in the areas of training particularly because mm. that's where we have to build capacity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Build capacity, right now we are focusing on is issues of digital transformation mm. but you're also focusing on uh, processes. Eh? How mm. do you uh, how do you establish processes and three mm. how do you recover from the negative impacts of COVID-19 because mm. a lot of businesses have been decimated yeah. uh, by this pandemic then we're also focusing a lot on networking and linkages how can SMEs be able to know which available opportunities exist mm -hmm. either with regard to financing or with regard to access to markets and so on and particularly with access to markets we are 
supporting over 300 SMEs mm. to access markets to the African continental free trade area. That's because right. we, like you said, we can't be comfortable and local. There mm. are a lot of opportunities out there. Yeah, we went to Ghana and they don't have sugar. They don't mm. have leather. Yeah. They are importing leather from Italy. Yeah. But our leather is also just meandering around <laughs> with no market. Can take it there. So how can <laughs> we take advantage of those opportunities so that our SMEs can... Mm. Because instead of saying, Rwanda has closed, but Ghana is open. Mm. Yes. Don't yeah. get fixated on the closed one, look for the open one. Mm. So we are, we, are, we, are, we are therefore mm. working in those areas to ensure that SMEs can be upgraded. Mm. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a big, um, it's a big task. Mm. SMEs are many, yeah. and many of them have, as you have you, as you said, they have different levels of motivation. Mm. The SMEs that say, Nze, that's Rama it. Nze. Let's talk about the structures. What are you doing about, because earlier on, mm. um, these two gentlemen, they mm. said SMEs lack structures. At times, they're not bankable because they're mm. no structures. Mm. What are you doing about it that they can possibly? So part of the what the federation is doing really is to ensure that we. So in each district, firstly, we are setting up what we call SME startup hubs to complement what they are doing. Because yes. they are setting up industrial parks, mm. they are setting up one-stop shop centers, mm. but we also want to have hubs yes. so that. We clean them up by the time we send them to, you know, they are fine -tuned. there's that linkage mm. and yeah. it's, it's seamless. So we are focusing a lot on building structures at the district level mm. to ensure that SMEs there are organized. Okay. Last week we were in Lira, the other week we were in Soroti, next mm. week we are going to Hoima. Mm. So we are on the ground okay. to ensure that our SMEs are organized. That Let the nice. few who are disorganized yeah. not confuse the opportunities for the many that we are trying to organize. That are organized. Yes. That makes sense. Because the future belongs to the organized. Oh, of course. That's why the <laughs> federation. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the federation is here. Yes, yes, to make it easier for them. Correct. So if you're not in the federation, just make sure you actually look out for them. And membership is free. Mm. We are not a business. <laughs> yes. Because they may think John uh, is uh, making noise so that he makes more money. Yeah. No, we are not a business. The federation of the SMEs is it free. It is free. Totally great. Mm. Well, what, what are your parting shots about this conversation today in all that we have seen? And when do we start the challenge? You see now me, I'm a little bit aggressive when I did some things. <laughs> So I, I think um, I put out the challenge there. Yes. And I think the, the key thing was for us to realize that mm. Jan 1 is not a switch. Yeah. And the build up for me is the challenge that I want to work with Mr. Walugembe mm. and Mr. Chalimpa here. Yes. And let's agree that any model has failure rates. Mm. You will not get 100%. True. But let us begin off and say, let's begin off with this one cohort. Mm. And it could be 50, it could mm. be 30. Yeah. But out of it will come an enrichment. People will have information on their hands. Mm. I have a team of, a whole team, mm. a, a whole business banking unit mm. that I am ready to deploy. Nice. And there are business bankers who mm. are subject matter experts, mm. whether it's uh, from assessing the business plans that we work along mm. uh, with the UIA as, as these people develop their business plans, or to assist them mm. to even just streamline and get to understand how to go about documentation and things like that. Mm. would really want yeah. to, to take this mini incubator yeah. and take this mini um, analysis that mm. we want to take here mm. and make it a real output a performance indicator out mm. of this particular cohort mm. and we can be able to test it and see the success rates mm -hmm. so that by the time we come back next yeah. next year mm. we actually can prove and say that it's not a hypothesis yeah, yeah. what mm. uia is talking about is real i will actually visit as a journalist and cover those few stories from an investigative from an journalist yes. yeah. uh, it would be yes. good for you to actually deploy and see mm. that what's the development plan on some of these names as they grow mm. and we walk along with that journey that makes sense. Thank you. Executive Director, uh, this is the Deputy ED of the Uganda Investment Authority. Dr. Chalimpa, you've been very resourceful in this conversation. Going forward, what are the calls to actions to the SMEs and uh, what is the next move of the UIA? Uh, one, we want to improve access to this information mm. about the opportunities mm -hmm. and the incentives. Yes. Because we have realized that information is power it's and most of these people do not have this information mm -hmm. but we are going to go through first we have activated the district investment committees mm -hmm. because we want them to be 
uh, the ones first to catalyze <coughs> local investment. Mm. And when you are talking about business profiling or SME profiling, mm. you are going to be the coordinators in each district yes. once you have investors okay. provided nice. and provide them access to opportunities. Mm. Two, uh, we are going to embark in the next five years to put up five mega industrial parks okay. and business and agro industrial resolution zones, three, mm. two of them, mm. uh, three of them. So that's important in stimulating the agro best industry in mm. Uganda. Mm. Uh, three, we are putting up an online portal for SME portal. Mm. We want to know who the SMEs are. Mm -hmm. What are their needs? What do they say? Mm. What services do they have? Yes. And then you want to know their w that's how we can, as a government, be able to support them through mm. the associations and to make sure that they have access uh, to information mm. in terms of the opportunities. They have access to finance. Mm. They mm. have also access to the market. Okay. And we want to work with the government, including, for example, uh, the standards agency, UNBS, mm. to provide free certification services to, to NBAs uh, who have formalized their businesses. Mm. So the core is that SMEs should formalize their businesses because at one stop center, UIA, mm. Uganda Judicial Service Bureau, URA, KCCA, UMEME, mm. NEMA, all these institutions, banking, all of them are one, under one stop center, mm. online as well as physical. So mm. we want to tell Ugandans and SMEs. <coughs> that start preparing for these opportunities. If you don't prepare, <laughs> in the next five years, Uganda will be at a, a higher level and at mm. another stage. Mm. And uh, if you cannot access uh, the land as an individual, mm. or as, uh, sorry, as a company, you work through association. Mm. If you cannot do that, start, go to Uganda Industrial Research Institute, mm. but also I'm going to publish other companies yeah. that have built up what we call the workspaces for SMEs. Mm. You go there. But also, by providing SMEs, we want to know what they can supply to the big farms in industrial parks. Okay. Yeah. Then lastly, for foreign direct investment, mm. we want to build what we call uh, an investment, an inv investment uh, deal room. What is that? An investment deal room is an online platform mm. that connects people who have, for example, capital, mm -hmm. those people who have goods, mm -hmm. want to supply them, mm. those who have raw materials to, to come together on the platform online to interact. So the foreign investors mm. who are outside there who have the market yeah. and they need products from Uganda, mm. they will be able to engage with the Uganda, Ugandan Uganda based or domestic investors mm. to provide them with the goods or the services which they require oh. in those international markets. On the other side. So it is a deal room because I in there in the you're room. engaging <laughs> and uh, you'll be able to, to, yes. to do business uh, business to business, mm. uh, business to, to customer mm. and business to government because government also has opportunities yes. that will be offering mm. for partnership, private public partnership, mm -hmm. like uh, we have uh, the uh, power generation mm. using, uh, for example, converting biogas, mm. uh, uh, waste in Kampala, to biogas and to power, okay. to sell to government. And you also get benefit from the carbon credit. Mm. So all those projects we have provided them, mm. and we have investors who are going to take them up. So we are doing more providing with Uganda Government Corporation mm. and other government ministries, departments, and agencies mm. to make sure these opportunities are available to Ugandans and foreigners, foreign investors outside, so that Uganda in the next uh, five or ten years. Mm. We will be like we, you here in Dubai. We are at a different level. Yes. Thank you so much. That is a Dr. Paul Chalimpa from the Uganda Investment Authority. He is the Deputy Executive Director. Just so you know, they're working on the SME portal, but currently the UIA has what they call the business portal. When you go on the website and you find this portal, it has all researched business models you can start with as a Ugandan and you start businesses from scratch, well researched with rightful measures and strategies. Just tap into it. Uh, before we leave, yes. Before my phone blacked out as well on Twitter, someone had reminded me yes. you had promised to give the public the number. Yes, that, that's uh, very that, much that, that, <laughs> that they can actually reach out to you. Especially now, those besides this, uh, uh, <coughs> the number for your uh, website that is on the, on, on the portal. Yes. Let's start with the portal yes. www.ebiz.go.ug. Mm. 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 That is an online portal. For you, you can access online services for mm. Uganda Justice Services, for URA, mm. for uh, getting a trading license, mm. or, or secondary licenses. www.ebiz.go.ug. Yes. 
go dot mm. ug dot ug yes okay and uh, also on the, uh you uganda website to the mm. www dot uganda invest mm. dot u dot 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 go dot ug okay www dot uganda invest dot go dot ug mm. but also those who want to contact me directly yes there are many uh, SMEs I, there. they can call me on my number mm. which is the mtn number yes uh zero seven eight two mm -hmm. Three two eight five nine eight. Okay. Zero seven eight two three two eight five nine eight. I mm -hmm. pick all calls mm -hmm. and whenever my phone is on I can be able to pick the calls. Okay. And even if I find a missed call, I'm able to You're respond to it. Wow. Yes. You're a very unique executive uh, director yeah. here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, please don't call it now. <laughs> it is a <laughs> countryman. He came from the, uh, it came from all, the private it sector. Is, uh, I that's oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> I'll be able to respond to the, uh, the missed call. After yeah. the show. Yes, you oh, okay. the call, yes. Thank you so much, those who have been part of this conversation. Since we started at 2.30 uh, p.m., these conversations with the top 100 SMEs, it's well a great um, conversation that is put together by uh, the National Media Group and of course uh, the KPMG just to make sure that SMEs can be resilient in business but not only that bounce back as a country we have to bounce back to the economy that is very resilient and very moving forward great thanks to our great sponsors of the issue that is the DFCU Bank with pleasure if you don't have an account with them think about it today the only bank that wants you to actually you know tap into the opportunities that are there they have a couple of products they have women in business they have uh, science and innovation there is quite a lot tap into it and the other partner and sponsor is uh, the Uganda Investment Authority. The One Stop we, Center. We have the One Stop Center. We have the executive director here. He has actually given us information. You and I possibly didn't know that it's out in the void. Visit their website and visit their different locations and acquaint yourself with more information because information is power. So before you and I lament, let's take action. I'm Andrew Chamagiro and have a lovely afternoon.